In the midst of all the stretching and folding that is caused by the stable and unstable manifolds of a chaotic system, their tangled geometry and how the system state evolves along them as e to the Lyapunov exponent times time, there's a surprising element of order, what are called unstable periodic orbits. I've alluded to these before, and in this segment I'm going to circle back around and tell you a bit more about them and their role in nonlinear dynamics. Imagine a crater in a dynamical landscape, like one left by a volcano. If you were to balance a ball very carefully on the rim and give it just the right push, it will roll around that rim. So this is actually a periodic orbit. But it is an unstable periodic orbit because any perturbation will cause the ball to fall off of it. A stable periodic orbit, in contrast, is a groove in the landscape that might look like this in cross-section. You've seen this picture before, by the way. You can imagine topographies of the dynamical landscape that would make an unstable periodic orbit more or less sensitive to perturbations. Balancing a ball, for example, on the ridge line of a bagel would probably be easier than balancing that ball on the rim of a fine porcelain teacup. The eigenvalue associated with the transverse unstable direction is bigger here and smaller here. It's kind of like the fat horse and the thin horse. Some people call this more stable and this less stable, but technically that's not really okay because stability is binary, like pregnancy. You either are or you aren't. Now, it turns out there are an infinite number of unstable periodic orbits embedded in any chaotic attractor. It's hard to visualize this using the crater rim metaphor because chaotic attractors live in three-dimensional and higher-dimensional state spaces. Remember, three dimensions is a necessary condition for chaos and flows, but not in mass. So the craters and bagels and teacups are in a four-dimensional space, which makes things kind of hard to think about using the landscape metaphor. But here they are. These are all trajectories of the same ODE, which is Lorentz, but in the bottom three, I balance the initial condition right on one of the unstable periodic orbits. If it was a teacup-like unstable periodic orbit, I have to be really careful about that. If it's more like a bagel, I can get away with being a bit less precise. At the end of this segment, by the way, I'll come back to how you find these things. Note that these unstable periodic orbits, or UPOs, have different periods. The one on the left and the bottom goes around each side of the attractor once. The one in the middle goes around each side twice. The one on the right goes around the right-hand side of the attractor five times and the left-hand side of the attractor three times. This is actually the second piece of the UPO puzzle. Not only are there an infinite number of these things embedded in any chaotic attractor, but they are of all periods. And the third piece of the UPO puzzle is that these things are dense in a chaotic attractor. If you're standing on a point on a chaotic attractor, and you draw a ball of radius epsilon around your feet, there will be one of these UPOs in that ball, no matter how small you insist on making that ball. The fully assembled magnificence of the UPO puzzle is the fact that the attractor is the closure of the set of unstable periodic orbits. What that means is if you computed pictures like the ones across the bottom of this slide, for every single one of the unstable periodic orbits in the Lorentz system and stack them on top of each other, you'd actually get the attractor at the top right. Of course, this is problematic because there are an infinite number of these, so that would take a while. There are good papers about all this by Predrag Svetanovic. For people who are interested, I will post the citations on the supplementary materials page. I think of UPOs kind of like attractor bones. This one at the bottom left here is the spine of the attractor. The one in the middle on the bottom fills in, you know, some legs. And the one on the bottom on the right fills in some arms and maybe some ribs. You can really see that compositional structural kind of pattern if you look at this in three dimensions. Here's an attractor. And what this movie is going to show you is a bunch of the unstable periodic orbits inside that attractor starting from that low period one that visits once around each side. Here's another one, another one, another one. And you can see as the unstable periodic orbits 
are added in, you start to see the structure of the full attractor emerge. Let's go back to that bagel versus teacup business and think about what that means for a trajectory on a chaotic attractor. Since trajectories cover attractors densely, and since there's an unstable periodic orbit within epsilon of every point on every attractor, that means that any trajectory in the basin will eventually visit any unstable periodic orbit you choose for whatever epsilon you want to choose. When it visits one, it will roll around it once or twice or 10 or 19 times, depending on how close it came and how unstable the UPO is. The trajectory will eventually fall off the unstable periodic orbit because it wasn't really on it, it was just near it. If it's a bagel kind of unstable periodic orbit, it will roll around more times before falling off. But even if it's a teacup kind, a trajectory that gets close enough will recur a couple of times. And that's where these veils in the logistic map bifurcation diagram came from. Those are unstable periodic orbits. The trajectory gets near one, then comes back, and those visits leave their tracks in the trajectory, making the attractor look denser in that region. As an aside, those of you with sharp eyes have probably noticed that if you trace back the unstable periodic orbits, the veils in the attractor, you often end up on a periodic orbit. Indeed, some unstable periodic orbits are periodic orbits that went unstable because of the bifurcation, but did not get totally destroyed, just their stability got changed. Here's another fun application. This is called Poincaré recurrence, and it involves a 2D map. The first two pictures show you how the map acts on the unit square. The third picture in the top row is after two iterates of the map. The second row are the third, fourth, and fifth iterates of the map, and so on and so forth. And what you see is by the 18th iterate, which is the middle image on the right, most of the structure of the original image is gone. That is, this map has kind of kneaded that face out of existence. By the way, that is a picture of Poincaré. After 47 iterations in the second row from the bottom, you start to see shadows of his face again. And then after 241 iterations of the map, he comes back almost intact. What's going on here is that there's some sort of periodic orbit of this map with a period of 241 iterations. In the last segment, I talked about sections. What do you think you'd get if you'd sliced this unstable periodic orbit crosswise? You'd get a bunch of dots. The number of dots will depend on where you slice it and what its period is. That actually brings out a subtlety in the definition of the period of any kind of periodic orbit that's a little bit beyond our scope. Sections play a role in the algorithms that we use to find unstable periodic orbits. I'm just going to sketch this. If you want to code it up, you can look at the papers by Gunaratne and So that I'll put on the supplementary materials page. But here's the idea. You take your trajectory of your chaotic attractor and you slice. And then for every one of those points, you look for close returns. That is, you look for points that came back really close. And those might have been visits to an unstable periodic orbit. Then you cluster like points, and you average. Unstable periodic orbits are another piece of that do we ever really see chaotic attractors business that came up in the previous unit. Because they're dense in the attractor, any small perturbation, like for example a, an error made by an ODE solver, will bump you over onto another one. And the same thing at the next step. So what you're really seeing is points on different unstable periodic orbits as you solve the ODE. And that picture that I drew last time that had those blue threads and those dots jumping back in between them, those blue threads were actually threads of the periodic orbits.